Hi everyone, my name is Erin Buchanan and I'm here to teach you today about the R package MOAT. MOAT stands for magnitude of the effect or measure of the effect. We actually picked one a long time ago and we forgot, so whatever it says on GitHub. But either way, MOAT is a package that lets you calculate effect sizes and their confidence intervals. It especially uses confidence intervals that are non-centralized. So uh, you can use this package on many types of effect sizes that you would find in reported research like D, uh, R squared, eta, GES, and omega squared. So let's check out how to do this. I built a little template markdown. If you have not installed Moat, it is available on CRAN. So you just simply use install.packages. You can also install it directly from GitHub. I won't run this because I <laughs> have already installed it, but you should at first install that package. I do assume you have some knowledge, working knowledge of R when you are watching this tutorial. To work today, I'm going to load Moat dplyr because it's my favorite and easy. So I can show you an example of an ANOVA. So let's run all those bad boys. Cool. So the first thing I really want to do is say that we spent a lot of time on the help pages. So I hope that you look at them. And so to look at those, you can just do question mark or and type moat as a package or come over to the packages window, find wherever moat is at, and click on it, click on the name and not just the description. But then we have a whole bunch of examples. So here are all the things that moat includes so far, right? It is an actively developed package when I get a break, but we have um, in general, the rule is that the name of the function starts with the effect size you're calculating. So everything that starts with the D is for Cohen's D or some form of T as an effect size. Okay. Everything that starts with Delta is glasses Delta, right? Uh, epsilon, Eta, GES for the generalized effect size, right? Odds ratios, Omega, R, and then chi-square, so Kramer's V. The other things that say data next to them are the example data points from each of these particular pages. So if I click on ADA here, it tells you about the function, the usage for the function, so how, uh, what all the arguments are, a description of what you should put in each argument for these functions, the details where we tell you what the formula is for the function, Right, so this is how eta squared is calculated, given what inputs that you put in. Okay. You can click on this link to go to the example page that has even more stuff on it. If it still works, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, this will render in LaTeX format after it thinks for a hard while, and you can read it a little better. Right. It has an example for each page. Now, the website has more examples, and these might be really good for your students who are trying to translate output from um, different uh, statistical programs, right? So here's an example from JAS, an example from SPSS, an example from SAS, and how that function runs in R. In a different video, I will teach you how to use the online Shiny app version of this. So uh, it explains all of the outputs that you'll get once you uh, run this effect size. Um, yeah code and then uh, examples. So these examples are all from like intro stats books, but it shows you how to calculate something. So all of these examples will work directly from uh, the code. So you can just copy them or actually I think you can just click run examples and it will show you the output okay. or it won't. <laughs> you can hit enter and you'll get output. Okay. So we put a lot of time and effort into that documentation. I would love for you to look at it. Now, um, what all do we have? Well, we have the main effect sizes that you will find in the literature, other effect sizes forthcoming, um, but mostly the common pairwise test D, um, glasses delta G, and then the common linear model tests, right? So eta, omega, generalized effect size, the one for chi-square, Kramer's V, and some odds ratios. Okay, so we have a good number of those different effect sizes, and they are based on the type of research design that you have. Okay. 
And then I will say that if you're writing your markdowns in R, maybe with the fabulous papaya, you can also um, pull out the effect sizes in LaTeX format and tell it to print directly. It mostly works in PDF knitted versions, but it will um, format it in APA style for you. So let's look at a quick example, two quick examples. So to do this, I'm gonna use the Palmer Penguins da uh, data from the Palmer Penguins package in R. It's a really great package if you are tired of iris or empty cars. And I'm just omitting the, the uh, missing data from the penguins data set. So it's got a list of penguins, um, their species, their bill links, their body mass, and gender. And so I'm going to use T apply. You can also do this with dplyr and do calculate by groups. But one thing that we've done so far with Moat is simply entering the numbers directly, but you don't want to type them because typing them directly means you might make a typo or this won't be dynamic with changes in your code. And so uh, what you can do is save your mean, your standard deviation, and your sample size. So let's look at those. The body mass difference, it does seem that females are lighter than males in penguins. Uh, the standard deviation for that body mass in grams and the sample sizes for each of those. Okay, so how many of each do I have? Now that is two distinct groups of data. So this is between subjects effect size. And since there's only two groups, I can calculate D. You can also calculate R, but for a lot of folks, D makes more sense as the, the magnitude of the difference between them as opposed to the correlation between them. So we'll do D dot I N D for independent samples dot T. And again, if you're not sure what you're supposed to enter, use a question mark. So IND, meaning independent samples, T test as the test. If I did IND.T.T, <laughs> this was before I figured out that Python does lots of dots, so please forgive me. Uh, IND.T.T means I want to calculate D for independent samples T test on the T value. So you can convert directly from T. However, it's usually better to convert directly from the means, so that's what we'll do. And these two, they're equivalent in um, repeated measures tests. They may not be equivalent. So we'll say mean one equals mean one. Mean two equals, whoops, sorry, too much scrolling. Mean two, standard deviation one, standard deviation two. I should label this better. N one and N two. You could see all of those listed if I back up in order that you're supposed to write them in. And this way, I'm just saying for the first mean and standard deviation, compare it to the second mean and standard deviation, my alpha or my significance level is 0.05. That means I'll get a 95% confidence interval. So let's see what happens. Well, I saved this on purpose so I could show you that it prints a ton of output. One way to look at it is just print it out. The other way to look at it is use the environment right, and look at everything. So we'll give you the effect size with its label. So D, low and high, the 95% non-centralized confidence interval for that effect size. And then for this statistic, we actually will give you the mean standard deviation, which you enter directly, but also the standard error, the confidence interval for that mean, right, based on its uh, standard error and sample size, mean two, standard deviation, standard error, and that's confidence interval. S pooled and standard error pooled, which are part of the calculation. A for T, N1, N2, the degrees of freedom, T and P. So you actually get like the entire T test, <laughs> including the really fancy way to put it out into your document. So if I wanted to print this um, in LaTeX format, I could say effect dollar statistic, which will print the T test statistic. Okay, the dollar signs will give it the right appropriate formatting look in LaTeX. And so I could say, wow, that's a really big effect size. And I could also do effect dot, uh, I forgot, estimate. Okay, and that'll give you the uh, estimate for Cohen's D. Notice here that it's got this S statistic. Okay, that's Cohen's D for independent samples. Okay, that's from the Lakin's paper on the best way to label all these different versions of the what's called Cohen's D. Okay. 
And so this will print for you a nice, pretty APA format in latex style if you're using that. Otherwise, you can grab each piece one at a time. Effect so dollar D, dollar mean, et cetera. Okay. Now that's how we might look at T. Let's look at a effect size for ADA. Okay, so I'm going to use easy ANOVA for this example because it's one of my favorite ANOVA functions because I can make the output match SPSS kind of easily to show people that they do provide the same answer. And I do have to have an ID number for easy ANOVA to work. And I'm just going to run a very basic one way between subjects ANOVA comparing the different types of species of penguins on their bill length. So is there a difference between the different beak links on penguins. I didn't know this until I ran this. Now looking at the easy output, right? Um, it gives me Levine's test, uh, which is the second one, I think. It prints kind of funny in our markdown, but the first one is the ANOVA. Okay. So that we see that, yes, we do have a significant difference in the bill links of different penguins. But the nice thing about easy is it will give you generalized eta squared. And a between subjects test, that's the same thing as eta squared. So we can make sure that we're actually doing it right. And then it'll give you Levine's test. So let's see. I'm going to calculate eta f. Okay. So eta directly from f. Now I could calculate eta fully from the sum of squares or partial eta squared from the sum of squares. But we'll just do the simple one, which is directly from f. You put in your degrees of freedom model. Now I'm using the terminology from the Andy Field book. Uh, degrees of freedom model is the same thing as degrees of freedom numerator. Degrees of freedom error here is the same thing as DFD or degrees of freedom denominator. We put in F, which is this number, and our alpha, which is, we're gonna stick with 0.05. And what do we get? Same kind of output, eta, so 70.70. It's a really big effect size. I don't make them this large on purpose, <laughs> right? But if we compare that, we get the same number as our generalized effect size. And then going back to it, we get a low and a high statistic. A model error F, and it calculates P again for us. So I can again print out the estimate and the statistic so that I have the complete package of all the numbers I should report in my uh, APA output. So this is a very quick and easy version of how to use Moat, right? I Like I said, we have so much documentation. Please love to look at it. Tell us what's wrong with it and um, give us some feedback. But the documentation should help you if you're not sure where the number is coming from. It's got examples for three or four different types of output. So I'm glad that you're here today. Enjoy Moat. Hi guys, my name is Aaron Buchanan, and I'm here now to show you how to use the online Shiny version of Moat. You want the R package? That's a different video. So one thing first is that we have this really great website that shows you everything about the package and has some really great documentation. So you can click on tests and look at all the different tests that we have sorted by the type of test um, that each effect size goes with. Uh, the references for how we pulled a lot of this. Big props to Ken Kelly's MBEST package to help us out. And just an introduction of like, what the heck is a confidence interval on an effect size anyway? Okay. So all this goes with our Shiny app, which hopefully will load. All right, so when you're working the Shiny app, this is really great like in the classroom or for students who need to calculate on their own and you don't wanna teach them coding, but you do wanna teach them about effect sizes. So what you do is you pick the type of statistical test normally that you're pairing this effect size with. And so we organized it around that because that's generally what students are learning, right? Is the type of test. So let's do an easy one and do an independent t-test. I'm gonna calculate that from means. Then over here, you enter all the information that you might find. What's really nice, and thank goodness to some graduate students of mine at the time, is that for each test, we have examples. So where's our independent T one? Between subjects with, here we go. Okay, for your pooled standard deviation, the denominator, that's independent T. 
right? Is we have a description of the formulas here in LaTeX format. So it tells you the, the formula for the test. It tells you the formula for T and how those two things are different. So you could use this for teaching. Um, relevant R information gives you an example and the data is available on GitHub. Then for three of the biggest popular programs, we have JASP, which Jamovi's output is very similar, with SPSS and SAS, all shown here on this data, pictures of what that output looks like so that you could um, show students, you know, this is the T value you'd need. Here's the mean that you'd need. Grab it from here, take this from there. Okay. And then it also shows you how to calculate this in Moat. So the, how you'd enter information into the, the package or the Shiny app, and then what effect size that you might get and how you would interpret that output all the way down through the interpretation. I also have a whole series of videos on YouTube beyond this one that go over these exact things as well. So this is like a summary of the summaries almost, but let me show you the package in action. Okay. So we're just gonna make up some numbers here. So let's compare two to four, something nice and easy, right? With a standard deviation of two in each one. So that would be two, four minus two, right? Divided by two, so our effect size should be approximately one, okay? give or take, you know, sample size. So let's see, we got a hundred and a hundred just to make these numbers nice and round and easy. And then we'll hit calculate. Now, one thing that's confused people in the past is there's a number that's supposed to go here. And so sometimes people hit calculate and it doesn't do anything. You do actually have to type the number in the box. So we just put in the default of what to what you should be putting there, right? If you're a student, you may not remember that alpha is that P less than 0.05 thing. Hit calculate. It'll tell you the definition of that particular effect size. It'll give you the effect size and its confidence interval. So our effect size is one. It, it will interpret the effect size. So if it doesn't include zero, it will spit out your effect size does not include zero. So most people might think that that's not different from zero, something very simple like that. It actually will print the group summary for you. So it'll calculate standard error and the 95% confidence interval for each group. And it'll actually print the t-test as well. If you're trying to transition students from SPSS to R, you could also show them how it works in R. Right? And so this is the help guide pulled directly from R. And then the help page is a video <laughs> that shows people how to pull information. Right? And so between the uh, online website and the data embedded directly in the app, you should be able to calculate just about everything uh, on these two. Okay, and these are the students that helped with this. They're wonderful. They're my favorite heroes because this took a lot of stuff to set up and they did a really great job making sure all of the help pages look as good as they do. So I will not take any credit for that, but we'll take credit for putting together a very extensive list of possible effect sizes for you guys to use. And hopefully this will also help with teaching because we put a lot of time and thought into um, having the information and the interpretations uh, listed on the pages themselves. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions, but this is how you use Moat the Shiny app and where to find all the information in case you get stuck.